Hi, I'm Barton Seaver, chef and National Geographic Fellow. Welcome to CookWise. The Chesapeake Bay was once famous for its oysters, still is, but populations are 1% of their historical levels. Not only is this devastating for fishing communities, it's also harmful for our oceans. Oysters could make a comeback through the efforts of people like Ryan and Travis Croxton, owners of Rappahannock River Oyster Company. They're working in a fourth generation, 100 year old family tradition, trying to keep the Chesapeake oyster not only on the map, but on our plates. Good to see you, Great to see you guys again. All right. Well, let us show you how we're trying to make a difference. Great. I'm excited to see this. So not all aquaculture is the same. Uh, you chose a cage method for your oysters. Tell me about that. We wanted to do something that was as close to natural as possible. So our gro oysters grow just like the wild ones do, just in a cage. And we pull the cage up, we'll actually show you. They're creating a little reef environment just like you would in a major reef environment. We're just doing it on a smaller scale, and so we don't have to dredge the, um, the bottom to get those oysters back. We just lift a cage. And now, are your right oysters down. helping to reseed native wild populations? Yeah, we're definitely. Uh, that was one of the things that was, we were key on. We wanted to have not just a business strategy, but a restoration strategy. So, so it's it. so it's really about you know being able to give back and then be able to make money off of it as well. We're not kidding ourselves. This is a business. But if we can be doing something, each one of these, I mean, what do they produce? Like a million, Ten million uh, eggs, Ten million. one oyster. Great. So I mean, all that stuff is just going out into the bay. Let's eat some of this <laughs> restoration. Right. Oysters are the great recyclers of an ecosystem. They filter nutrients out of the water column and thus fix it in the environment. Millions and millions of oysters at their historical population cumulatively filtered the entire bay in just a few days. But currently, the low levels and devastated populations of oysters, it takes almost a year to do the same process. Wow, these look great. Each compartment can hold 500 market-sized oysters. So, it also helps with a chef's fulfillment. They call us, we harvest it, we know exactly what's out here, and they know what they're getting. There's no variables with how much can I catch today. It's far. The main difference is we're just offering protection for the oysters so that, you know, stingrays and things like that that would naturally want to come after an oyster can't get to it. Uh -huh. And with this jostling around of, uh, of all these oysters and the times that we work it throughout the year, you get this really cool effect of you're chipping off this outer bill growth. It starts to shape the oyster. So unlike a wild oyster, which is going to grow in a clump and grow all misshapen because it's trying to fight for food, these get to sit rather lazily in here and have food brought to them and concentrate wow. more on growing deeper, so mm -hmm. more concentrated on meat growth rather than shell growth. And these look so fantastic. I can't wait to try one. Do you mind? Dig it, man. Enjoy. Cool. Now, shucking an oyster, a lot of people think this is a really difficult task. We just go knife right into the back shell, hinge it up, and then slice off that top shell. And look at that. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful oyster. Go there you go. That is so, so good. Great, excellent. Wow. Good to hear. What do we do with the shells? Throw them overboard, build a reef. Best litter in the world. That's right. Now, if raw oysters, the cold, sweet wonder, isn't your cup of tea, come on back in land with us. We're going to be cooking them up with a little bit of peaches on the grill. One of my very favorite things in the whole world is grilling. Today we're going to be taking those oysters just plucked from the water. We're going to be grilling them with a little bit of smoked paprika and peach simmered in a little bit of butter. But what really makes a meal is the vegetables. And I've tossed a little bit of red onion, uh, lemon slices, and some corn and olive oil, a little bit of salt, and just thrown those on. So this is butter and paprika, smoked paprika, or pimenton, a Spanish thing, Spanish ingredient that I absolutely adore. It's got a smoky, sweet flavor to it that marries perfectly. It's like bacon minus the bacon with everything you love about bacon. Win-win. Now I got my vegetables started way ahead of time so that they had time to cook all the way through. Oysters don't take but more than five minutes to cook and we've got a just a slowly smoldering fire here with the coals. We're gonna put these peach topped oysters right on top here. And that butter gets down there and flames up a little. All right, four minutes and we're good to go.
Come on, guys. That looks good. I'm excited to be sharing your oysters with you. We are, too. What do we got here? Environmentalism on the half shell. We're storing the river one delicious oyster at a time. Good for us, good for the environment, and good for families, too, you know? Hey, hey guys. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. <laughs> Hey, you love oysters? Yeah. Well, this is what I call family tradition. I love it. For recipes, tips, techniques, links, and seafood stories, visit us at ocean.nationalgeographic.com forward slash cookwise. To join us in a global effort to protect the ocean, go to imtheocean.org. Remember, delicious is the new environmentalism. So cookwise. wise.